Pernak here, and today I'm going to show you how to proof and register a multi-block colored print. So the print I'm going to be doing today has got nine colors on it, but it's only going to have seven blocks. And that's because two of the colors are far enough away and separate enough from the other colors that I can actually roll it out separately. And I may even do another little trick, but today I am not going to do all nine colors. I'm just going to do the seven blocks. So the two colors will be knocked down to seven just because I'm proofing this. And just so you guys can get an idea of what it is that I'm doing today. It's more of a process of how I do this than the results of the final print right now, because that's not what's going to be important. As you can see, I have seven blocks here. Um, these ones right here, one, two, three, four, and five, are all the same size. They're five by seven. This one is five by eight, and this one is four by six. Why is this? I normally would have done them all on five by seven, but the reason I did not is simply because the art store that I go to, which is uh, Artists and Craftsman Supply here in Tacoma, was actually cheaper than every other place I could buy these things by at least a dollar. So... It was a good deal to buy them from there, but I ran out uh, of size. They ran out of sizes, and with the whole COVID thing, they couldn't get them. I mean, they were actually more expensive to buy them from Amazon than they were from here. Uh, Blake wasn't too bad. They were pretty close, but I wanted them instantaneously. I wanted them right then and now, and that's what I needed to do. So that's how I did these. So basically, the most important thing to remember is when I designed this and I did the artwork for it, I started at this right hand corner. So everything is aligned to that. So all these, even though they're different sizes, if they're layered on top of each other, all start from here. So they should, you know, theoretically, the idea behind this is as long as this is in the same place every time on each one of these blocks, they're all together like this, they should print perfectly. Like I said, theoretically, nothing ever happens perfectly in the world of printing. So we're going to go through. And I, But like I said, I'm going to proof this. Um, as you can see here, um, this is orange because when I do my process, I actually use a ink here to transfer the color. I don't have the ink nearby. I was hoping to have the ink nearby. I was trying to find it. But, uh, oh, it's right here. I use this right here. Pinata. It's from Jacquard. It's an alcohol ink. I squirt a little on there and then brush it around with a brush. And then I take a paper towel and some more isopel alcohol here. And then I wipe it off a little bit so it's not nearly as dark. And the reason I do this is I can easily see where this is. And because I use my transfer process that you saw before with the wood, you know, with the laser printer and the wood and the xylene and all that kind of stuff, that works very well there. So I have everything here. The only thing that I screwed up for was this block here, this one. This area got so mangled that basically I just ended up carving it out, taking it right down as you can see, right down to the wood. And then got another piece of linoleum, just clear, you know, not clear, but unmounted linoleum. And then recarved it. And then kind of, you know, I positioned, I printed out my paper, and then cut a hole in here, and then lined everything up on here, and then positioned this and glued it back down. Now, I am using mounted linoleum blocks, and the reason is because they're more square and they're more precise than unmounted because they may not be perfectly square. These are perfectly square, which is why I use them. Now, I'm not even going to mix my colors the proper way just because I don't see a point to that right now at this point in time. So, but I am going to show you some of the colors I'm going to use, and some of them are accurate. So I'm going to use the Speedball Professional Dye Yellow. It's going to be one of the ones I use. And then I'm using a bunch of Daniel Smith ones right here. 
I have my hands of yellow medium, my burnt umber, my yellow ochre, my phthalo blue, my phthalo green, and lamp black. This one's in a plastic bag because it developed a leak somewhere and it's starting to, you know, but the ink is still good. So I'm going to use this thing up until it's gone, which will probably take quite a while. Now, I'm going to, when I do this, prepare all my blocks. I'm going to roll out all my inks and get them all ready for, I can just go one right after another when I'm uh, showing you guys that. Now, in order to do this, we have to have some way of keeping our blocks in the same position every time. And this is where, this, this is how I do it. I get a piece of wood. Now I have a fairly large piece right here. This is about a 12 inch. I bought this at the Home Depot um, or Lowe's, one of the two. I can't remember, it doesn't really matter. I remember it was a two foot section. It was two feet long, can't show two feet on here. I cut it in half or cut it down, I should say. And then I drew two lines this way. And then I used the saw and cut this right to here and then cut this right there. I made sure it was perfectly straight and cut right along the line with a saw. And I just did that with my uh, you know, power saw that I had. And I do that because that's the one that we're going to use. So I get one of these, these are one of those mats that um, you know prevent slipping, which is why this is going to be so important. I have, like I said, I have the wood here, as you can see. And you can see a pencil line that I've drawn right here. And that is one inch in. Now you can even do this a half inch or however what it is. You know, um, this is a five by seven print. It's not very big. I typically try to make my paper one inch border all around. So a five by seven would be, you know, seven or nine by seven piece of paper. Um, doesn't really matter as long as it's larger. If you want a half inch border, like you could do that there, but I do a one inch and I draw this like right there. Now this is where it gets a little bit easier for me because I have these little guys here. Now you can make your own version of this with paper too. As you can see, they're just little metal clips. And they work really well. And what I do is I get some blue painter's tape like this. And you get two pieces of it. And I take a piece of paper. Doesn't matter as long as it's... And I line it right up on those lines right there that I drew like this. Then I'm going to need at least three more pieces of paper or pieces of tape. I actually need a total of six and I'm using a half inch tape. You got to use tape that is big enough. You can even go with a one inch but it doesn't really matter. So this is where our paper will always be. So what we do is we take these little clips and like you said they're bent over here I just line it up and I hold it right up against the paper like so and then I put a piece of tape right over the back of it right here and I do it this way and I make sure the paper is hitting both sides of this so I don't get it wonky or cross-eyed like that I always put it down just far enough here, like so. Like that. I put two down here, and I put one over here. Once that's done, I remove the tape from the paper and remove the paper all together like that. Then I take another piece of tape 
and then bring it down here all the way down and as long as it covers this little area right here you're fine because you don't want your paper getting caught on that and you know maybe slipping under it or something or moving this this is just secures these in a better location than what they are and this is how you register everything um, your block will slip right up into here and stay there and then your paper slides into here and that's how you register everything once I get my blocks all inked up I'll show you guys that all right. as you can see here I've got all my blocks inked up and ready to go I'm just gonna pick this up I've got my tripod but you can see here I have all my inks rolled out here I've got a uh, Hansa yellow yellow ochre, brown umber, diadem yellow, the phthalo blue, the phthalo green, and finally over here, oh, just black. That's all the colors we're going to be doing. Put the camera back on the tripod here so you can see everything. Good. The color looks good and everything looks fine. Um, so we're going to print the first color. And the first color is going to be the yellow, right here. I'm going to put it right in the corner. I'm going to grab my paper right here. I have soaked the paper. It is wet. It's not real crisp. And it is the Strathmore 300. I love using this stuff for proofing. And plus, you can get it wet. It's not all wrinkled up. A um, little bit of wrinkling, but it handles being soaked, which is one of the reasons I like this paper. So we put the paper in here like so, and then in the corner, and then I always grab the corner here, and then just let the paper fall. Then I will take my baron, just kind of press it down just a little bit to let it go. And because the paper is wet, it will Hill up, especially if you're using your Baron. So you put parchment paper, like baking parchment paper. That's what I'm using here. Parchment paper. I just get it at the dollar store. And then... I do want to be a little careful with the parchment paper because I will tear right through if I hit the corners of these things. And this is why I leave an inch border because that way I am not getting too close to these edges. And then I do have another bearing that I hand made here. I'll go over how to do this. But these are bamboo toothpicks. And if you can see here, I can't really see, but they're domed toothpicks right here. So they got a slight, they got a slight dome to them like that, um, which means it creates all these little contact pressure points, which is exactly what my Baron does because it's got all these little bumps on here. And it actually multiplies it instead of using like your wooden spoon, which has one, which only has one contact point. If you look at it, right there, the part where it arches the most is the most. I do use a wooden spoon occasionally, uh, but that arch is the most right there. That's the most pressure that you're going to get. By having a flat surface like this with a ton of these little bumps, that's multiplied multiplying over. So when you rub it over your paper like this, it works really well. This, I just took some thin cardboard, put it in the bottom of, this is how this came, actually. It came in this little flimsy plastic rubbery type container. I put a little bit of piece of uh, cardboard down there with some uh, silicone glue, uh, like silicone caulking type glue, a silicone adhesive, whatever you want to call it. Put it in there, put that in there, and then I squirted a ton of it in here, about that much, about halfway through, and then started putting the toothpicks in there. I mean, it's not perfectly round. And I've had a few break off in here, like there and things like that. But this thing actually works amazingly well for a little Baron. I mean, it just, it just, I really like it. And 
And then we're going to peel that up here. And as you can see, there's the print. Okay, yeah, I missed the corner, but I'm proofing this. So right now, that's not my biggest deal, you know? So I'm okay with that. And we're going to take this block and put it off to the side. Then we're going to print the next block. And when I did do these, you can see, like, right here, there's a little, it kind of like nudges out and flares out. This part is like right against the white, but the rest of it kind of get goes over the yellow or other parts go over that. So we're going to stick that in there like that. Hold the corner down. Put my parchment paper back over it. And of course, these inks are the water soluble oil inks. And as you can see here, I can see it's already misaligned. You can see it in the corner there, but that's fine. That's why we're doing this. So we see how far it's misaligned. Now I'm going to grab the second color, put it there. And this is basically all that you do. It's real simple to do. Just want to make sure you get it in there properly. Actually lines up almost perfectly well as you can tell that color and of course these are not my final colors for this some of them will be I know this yellow will be but I'm not going to use that for skin tone I'm not going to use that for the shadow tone but uh, I will be using this for the horns and the bikini this dilated yellow I like that color it's kind of an orangey yellow which is perfect for a tiger print bikini These are lining up pretty darn well, is what I would say. And in order to fix some of these, you think about, okay, if there's this space here, does this have to move over? And if so, how far does it have to move over? And that's when you do things like shims. If I wanted to do, move that block over, this one over, I figure out which way I want to go first. <coughs> Excuse me. It's a little warm in here and dry. Um, so if this is here, and I know this one, as I can look at it, I'm holding it up to the light so I can see, you know, like this, so I can actually see through it. I'm looking through the light, and I know that it needs to move over to the left compared to all the others. So what I do is I make shims right here. So I got I got these. This is just you know binders board. It's just cheap board. And then I use some thick paper. I use my go-to Stonehenge for everything. And I happened to figure this out beforehand, but one, two, three, four of these is equal to one of these. Because I know if I do five of them, it goes over the top there. So I could start out by shimming it with this. Or if I notice how far it needs to go over, I can just, you know, count out a couple of these and put them over on it. It's actually a very handy system. And if something needs to move this way, I would just bump every other block. Let's say this one's fine. 
and next one's fine, but then one needs to move over this way, I would actually take and either you could trim that other block off, that whichever one is wrong that needs to move this way to the right, you could trim it down, which is going to be difficult, or you can just shim all of them except for the one that needs to go. So it, it's a pretty easy system. And you can do that same with up and down too. If you find out everything needs to move, if one of them needs to move down and you know you can't move it down because of this, you can just shim everything else to go up. It's really, it's really quite easy to do. And it's a really easy system to use. And that's why I like it. And like I said, some of my blocks were a little smaller. So this is my four by six. It's still going to print in the right area. At least it should. And I can tell already my paper is starting to dry out. And because it's starting to dry out, I can more easily do this without using the parchment paper. And I can see that it needs to move. And that's fine. That's why we're doing this, to figure out where everything needs to move to. And we got the hair. Like I said, most of these, some of these colors will not be final. I do like my phthalo blue. I'm going to keep using that one. This was the block I was talking about, where it's got a separate color, the red lips. Right now they're blue, but they will become, I will do them in red later on. Got that there. But the green is a phthalo green. I, I'm not going to use this color green. I'm going to mix my own custom color for the green hair because I, two reasons. One, I don't like the color. And B, you see this where, it, you know, it, it's where the uh, colors overlap. And unfortunately the problem with phthalos as much as i love them and they're very strong very light fast they're great colors and they're actually very inexpensive for colors um the problem with phthalos though is when you look at them they're very transparent colors so uh, they layer very well they're actually really staining too and because they're very staining they got a good tinting strength a little bit goes a long way for them but it's not opaque. It's a transparent pigment. And it doesn't matter how many layers I build up and put on here, it will always be transparent because the nature of the pigment is transparent. I mean, you can even see on the block, right along the edges here, that some of the color transferred too. That does happen. I'm not really worried about it, but... And this is the bigger one. This is the 5 by 8 as you can see, it's bigger. Uh, same thing, as long as it's in this corner, you'll be fine. Pull down the corner there. And this is the black. This is the final one I'm doing. This one also has two colors on it. Um, and I'll show you here in just a moment. It's the mouth right there. As you can see, right there, the little mouth. That will actually be a pink instead of a red or something like, instead of black. And that, that's easy enough to do. I got some really small brayers. This is my smallest brayer. It's about, mm, I would say, three-eighths of an inch. Let's see here. I know it's supposed to be a centimeter. It's a German company that makes these. This is about nine millimeters. So inch-wise, it is yeah, three eighths. It's three eighths of an inch, which is the smallest brayer that I own. And it's actually nice to have small little brayers like that. They're very, very, very handy. As you can see, that is how you do your registration, and that's how I do it. And I use the blocks like this because it's easier. Now, I've seen people do this 
with mat board. You could do this with a piece of mat board too if you're going to use unmounted linoleum. You're just going to use a piece of unmounted linoleum like this. And as long as you have a perfect 90 degrees right here, you know, because, I mean, right here, that's not going to work. It's, it's down too far. You can see the depth change. But these, they're the same thing. And a lot of people don't realize about the mounted linoleum blocks is the height of these. I've had a few guys, um, I know some people that like to work on them. And I had a guy come into the store when I worked at the Daniel Smith and wanted to buy a printing press. And we had some small printing presses. We called them the baby press. And they were, God, they probably about six or seven hundred dollars now. Um, when I started, they were about four fifty or five fifty. I can't remember. But either way, you wanted it, but this wouldn't fit between the two rollers. There, I mean, he could barely get this through. And he goes, "I don't understand. Why do they even make these if you can't put them through a press?" I go, "Because they're not designed for an etching press. Because he wanted an etching press." Designed for a letter press because all of your letters, your little metal letters for metal or for um, for letter press, the sorts, the, the little let, the little metal sorts that they call them, they're all set to a certain height. So if you wanted to, you could do carve. And so they made these so that way you could carve designs, put them on there, and surround it by text and then do your printing with it which is actually a really good idea and most people don't even realize that nowadays and it's just something that kind of stayed and people still use them i like using them because they stay flat all the time i just wish sometimes they would make smaller versions of it hence why most of the time when i carve unmounted linoleum i normally go with really thin plywood and glue it down with wood glue but as you can see, that is how I do my registration. And when we go to, and I'll do another video on moving them left and right and doing all that thing and doing all those things to get this print perfect. But we'll do that in another video because there's only so many printmaking videos I believe you can make. Other one, thanks for watching my video. You can give me some much needed support by clicking the thumbs up down. That helps support me. Also, you can follow me on Instagram at Matt Pernet. The link will be down below. Also, finally, I do have an Etsy shop. You can purchase a print from me. You can just go to my Etsy shop. It's called Printing Pernet, or there's a link down below. Until next time, guys. Thank you.